All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is episode 17 of the last one, Fast One podcast. Um, our guest tonight is absolutely insane. Um, it's kind of crazy. We're talking to him right now. It's Justin Ress. And I'm just going to read off just a few accolades here. And um, just so you guys can understand who we're talking to. So he's a 21 time All American at NC State, um, three time NCAA champion. Um, seven-time World University Games medalist. Five of those are gold, I believe. Um, Two-time world champ. And he's your reigning um, 2022 50 backstroke world champion. And me and Luke looked this up. We're like, how many people are on planet Earth? (laughs) 7.7 billion. And we're talking to the guy who's number one in the 50 backstroke. So, uh, Justin Rest, thanks for joining us. Yo, yo, thanks for having me. Yeah, so let's just go ahead and get started. So, Justin, how'd you get into swimming? Like, travel back like a long time. <laughs> yeah, so so my family's kind of all always been in the water. My mom swam at NC State, just like me, actually, back in the in the eighties. And uh, just from you know when I was two or three, I mean, there's pictures of me in diapers going off diving boards at my summer league pool. So I've always just loved the water. Um, I got kind of serious about swimming not, not too serious, but, you know, I started year round swimming when I was, when I was six or seven, because I was on the summer league team and I hated losing to some of my friends who started year round swimming because they started getting way better. And I was like, dang, man, I, I'm tired of losing. So I, so I, I said, maybe, okay, I got to do year round swimming if I want to win. So that's kind of how I started uh, getting into year round stuff. Gotcha. So like, take us through like some of your first successes in the sport and like, what kind of led you to becoming a recruit at NC state? Um, so really up until I was 16 or 17, it was mostly just like social fun and just competing, just like fun racing, you know, like fun competition. I, I loved racing since I was a little, I love competing all kinds of sports. I was a soccer player, basketball player. Um, I was always good at, at pretty much every kind of sport there was. Uh, so I always just loved competing. And by the time I got to 16 or 17, I really, I wasn't too sure. I guess more like 15 or 16. I wasn't too sure if I wanted to even swim in college at all. Um, I think the summer after my junior year, I dropped 10 seconds in the tuner backstroke and like 12 and 200 AM. And I was like, wow, okay. I'm kind of nuts, man. Maybe, maybe <laughs> I should swim in college. <laughs> so uh, after that summer, I, I, I started getting recruited by like big schools, but beginning of that summer, I was more of like mid major level stuff. Uh, I know TCU reached out Northwestern reached out. Um, those kind of schools. And then after that, that big meet that summer, it was, it was NC state, Georgia, Florida, Louisville. So a lot of the, a lot of the bigger teams, you know, they saw how quickly I was improving. And even though I wasn't like a top recruit yet at the end of that summer, I just, when you drop 10 seconds in a 200, I mean, that's, that's grounds for getting recruited no matter, no matter how fast or slow you are. Right. Right. For sure. And so what was like that stood out um, about NC state? Uh, they wanted to transition me to sprinting. <laughs> so I always, uh, in high school, I was on a big, uh, a big yardage, a big distance team. Um, but I always kind of showed some potential in like the hundred and 200, especially And my senior year, I ended up getting, uh, pretty good at the 52. So they, they, they always kind of saw that potential and I'm a big guy. I'm six, five and like high school. I was, I was all just, I was just, I was a stick, man. I was like six, five, <laughs> like one sixty. So like NC state was like, okay, like, this guy puts on 40 pounds of muscle and he is like a top sprinter. So Mm -hmm. that was, that was always the move at at NC state. That was always what they were going for. I gotcha. So So, that that was the number one. (laughs) Gotcha. Did you take out an official recruit there or like a visit? Oh, sorry. No, you're good. It was a weird, weird audio thing. Uh, Yeah. So I took official visits to um, NC state was my first one actually. Love that. Love the place. Obviously, uh, ended up going there. I went to Louisville the next weekend, which I also loved. They had they have very similar teams, very similar coaching staffs, like high energy, all around kind of things. And after those two trips, I I knew I loved them both so much. I didn't take any more officials. Uh, but a couple weeks after that, I, I decided with NC State just because. I mean, I, I loved I love Raleigh. I love North Carolina. I just wanted to stay home. I'm from Cary, North Carolina, which is like 15 minutes away from NC State. I gotcha. Gotcha. So going into in, NC State, did you ever imagine the success that you'd have um, four years later? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Um, I think the at Olympic trials in 2016, that was after my freshman year. 
in the hundred back, I dropped like three seconds. I think I think I went into trials with like a fifty-seven one mm-hmm. or, or so, and at trials, I went like fifty-four or five. It was actually actually a funny story. I, I was in prelims and I knew I was going to drop a lot of time from like my fifty-seven whatever. Uh, and I finished to the wall and I think at the time said like 56. Oh, I was so pissed. I went to my coach. I was so angry. And like, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't even let him talk at all. I was, just, I was just like, so, so mad about there. I got last in my heat and all this stuff. And he's like, he's like, Justin, Justin, calm down. There's a timing error. So I was actually, I was actually like 54, five. So I was like a second <laughs> and a half faster than what the board said. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I mean, that, that's part of my competitive nature, man. I was so angry. Like I didn't even let anyone talk to me to even let me know, hey Justin, the board messed up. Like, calm down. Right. <laughs> so uh, after that summer, I kind of said, all right, well, I, I might have like an international like level competition in me. Uh, and then that that college year, my sophomore year, I really started to to hammer it down and become one of like one of the better depth guys at the NCAA. I wasn't scoring like a bunch yet, but I think I made B finals in the in the hundred free, and I was. I was on all of our relays. Um, I didn't do three events. I did all our relays. Uh, and I had some, some really good times on those relays. And then that summer I went from 54, I think like what I went to trial is like 54 mid or high or something. Um, the first meet that summer, I went like 53, seven or something. And I was like, wow. And that at that time that was like fourth or fifth in the, in the U S hunter backstroke. And I was mm-hmm. like, wow, like, man, this is, this is crazy. Uh, and then that, that summer I got really good at the 50 back, especially I, I had the number one time in the world. I had the number one time in the world going into world champs, uh, which did not do well for me. I was so nervous. I felt so much pressure. I was a little seven, I was a little, what, 19 year old, 18 year old, uh, still very, very skinny. Like all those guys in the 50 back were much bigger than me. Um, so I didn't go into it with a whole bunch of confidence, even though mm-hmm. I had the fastest time in the world. Um, still made finals, still had a sort of pretty good meet, you know, I got fifth place, but after that, um, after the pressure of that meet, uh, I kind of let that, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to say go to my head cause I still swam amazing at the college level, but mm-hmm. at international meets, it was always that, okay, I made it before. So I had to make it again. It was that expectation that I was going to make it. And, and that's not a very healthy way of doing this. And we might talk about the, the state of swimming later in this video, but that's a very, very unhealthy way of looking at how uh, swimming should be at the elite level. And, and we're seeing that now, especially with COVID. One of, the, one of the things that brought to light was mental health issues. And there's a reason why all these elite swimmers are nonstop saying, well, I had mental health issues. I was suicidal. Like I was in a dark place at this time. Like there's a reason why that's happening. Um, and it took me years to figure that out. I mean, it took, took me four years to figure that stuff out. Uh, but this year really, really showed what you can do with a healthy mind. Um, so really, you know, it's a long road to get here, but that's kind of the start of my international career. Those sophomore, junior year of college. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. For sure. And do you have like, so transitioning back to um, swimming at the college level for NC state, me and Luke were talking before the podcast. Um, we're like, man, we're probably just going to ask him his favorite because he's got so um, so many dang good races, 21-time All-American. Do you have one one moment or one specific thing easily. that would be over the top? Yeah, easily. Uh, our 400 free relay, my, uh, my junior year, I think it was 18, 17, 18. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, it was me, Jacob Malachek, Ryan Held, and Coleman Stewart. There's... <laughs> There is Lily. (laughs) Yeah. Um, I mean, and and we're pub stomping out there, man. I mean, at the NCAA at like one of the best levels in the whole world, we are just pub stomping. Nobody, nobody came close to us all Uh year at any point. I mean, it's crazy. Like, I don't think there's ever been a more dominant relay throughout the year, like in the history of NCAA, maybe, maybe Texas's medley relays, you know, when Willa Cone, just schooling Jack Conger were there, but I mean, you know, we, we went to NCAAs, we broke the NCAA record by over a second, maybe, or like right at a second, we broke it in prelims. And then we went even faster at night. Um, we had such a stellar training group that year. I mean, the vibes in our group was just, they were just so amazing. And when you have someone like, like Ryan Held and I, we, we're both on the U S foreign and free relay this year, you know, the best relay in the world. And yeah. if you have two of those guys on a college relay, and then you get two amazing guys like Coleman and Jacob, who are also, you know, two of the better swimmers in the world. One of them is an individual world record holder. Uh, you know, 
insane things happen. So that that was just so much fun every time we got to do that relay. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So you swim, you wrap up your career um at nc state these incredible accolades um what's what's next for you are you you trying to just keep trying to swim on the international stage because you had you had found a little bit of success you know going to our world championship team in 2017 or is it a different direction right now Uh, Uh, like after college after oh after college yeah after college was um you know what My, my senior year was such a letdown I think Mm -hmm. that's, I think I was pretty prepared to, to have my senior year be it. Um, You know, I wanted to be like one of the best guys. I wanted, you know, top three finishes. I wanted this and this and this, I wanted our team to to finally crack the top three and, and that kind of pressure, those kind of expectations kind of fell on my shoulders a little too hard uh, mentally. Uh, I wasn't, I wasn't being very healthy outside of the water my senior year. Uh, and it showed at NCAA is my senior year. You know, I, I had some extra weight. I was not, I was not fully mentally in every race. You know, the four and three relay, relay was something I was, I, I always swam well on. Cause I was like, man, I do not want to lose this. Unfortunately we got second, but at NCAA's, but that's how it goes. And that kind of let down at NCAA's kind of, kind of told myself, wow, this is, this is not it for me. There's no way that's how I'm finishing this. There's absolutely no way. Um, and that summer, it was a, it was a pretty decent summer. I got, I got, I got pretty lucky with, there's this meet called the FINA champion series meet. Um, and it's basically just like, just like a, it's a way, it was a way for FINA to have the athletes not be so mad at them. Cause they are basically just throwing money at the top athletes. Mm-hmm. And I was very lucky to be one of the athletes who, who desperately needed the money to be invited but the issue with those meets were the people that were already making the money didn't necessarily need that free money. I needed it. I was lucky that I got to do, I, I, I spent 50 back in a 400 free relay. And I made a lot of money at one meet. I mean, I was like 17,000 for, for two races, but like, you know, I think the minimum at those meets, if you just go there, swim as slow as you want in your event, I think the minimum you made was like $8,000, which was, just a joke. I mean, there, there were, and they invited, they invited Olympic champions first who hadn't swam, hadn't trained in two years who went there, went just like abysmally slow times and just made $8,000 for free. Um, that was, that was a cash grab for FINA. That was, that was a little bit, I, I was a little bit disappointed in that state of swimming. Um, and then as, you know, I wasn't really sure where I was going to go with the sport after that, after that summer, you know, I got lucky. I made some money everything was, you know, more or less going okay. Um, but that winter was when the international swim league started and this, the international swim league just reignited my swimming career entirely on a whole new level. I, I can't believe that that wasn't, that that wasn't already established in a sport like swimming where it's very easy to, to compete back to back to back to back weekends, like a normal sport, you know, like an Mm -hmm. NFL sport, NBA sport, that should be the dream for swimming. That should be what swimming needs to be in the future. Because not only is it better for the, the swimmers, way, way healthier mentally uh, for swimmers to just go race, knowing that they are on a contract, that they're going to get paid. Now, of course, there were issues with payments with the ISL for various reasons. Um, COVID also did not help. But at the end of the day, it was the most stable or it would have been the most stable form of income for swimmers we've, we've ever had. Um, and on top of that, it's, I, I, at least for me, when I was a kid, that would have been way more entertaining form of swimming to watch than watching swimmers go to like tier pro series in the middle of breakdown training and, and trying to kind of race for like kind of an amount of money. Right. Um, but that, that ISL should have been the next big thing for me. And that first season of ISL, I swam, you know, I swam. Okay. It it was basically the same swimming I had been doing. I was swimming. Okay. I wasn't really swimming that bad. Um, but I wasn't, you know, popping off. I was a depth guy. I was, I was a maybe a relay anchoring the B relay guy. Uh, and the finals of ISL that year were in Las Vegas. And that was the most fun swim meet I've ever been to, man. Mostly because we were in a casino. We were, you know, we swam and we, we gambled and then we swam and we gambled, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, 
it just, I think that meet, even though spectator wise, it didn't do too well. And there were a lot of kinks in the league um, at that time. I mean, there, there always have been kinks in the league. I think the show they put on was something that the general pub- public could get into, that the non-swimmers could get into. I think we've seen in swimming a an increase, a, a large increase in popularity since not, like, you know, 1990s, 1980s, but only in the swimming community. Um, now, because nowadays you have 10 to 14 year old swimmers who are really into the Olympics, you know, and that wasn't the case in the 90s, 2000s necessarily. Um, but the sport has grown so much. The swimming community has grown so much, but we're not reaching outside the swimming community. And I think as long as swimming stays in the same state that it is, that reach, it's not going to reach outside the general public. There's not enough, you know, drama in the sport. There's not enough storylines. All it is, is like, you know, swimmers representing their country going against other countries. There's not a lot of drawing there. Um, and the reason there's not a lot of drawing there, you know, it happens sometimes like 2008 was one of the biggest storylines in swimming history, but at the end of the day, you can't really jaw with, with other countries at the Olympics. Like, what do you, what am I going to do? Like, am I, am I talking shit to like the entirety of South Africa saying we're going to win this relay against you guys? Like you can't <laughs> jaw there, you know? Right. right. Like yeah. the reason why there are so many swimmers who are, pretty much every swimmer is so respected and so highly looked up to is because we don't have the ability to thir- to really be ourselves at that top level um, to like show our true competitive nature. Cause I promise you, there's a lot of swimmers who got a gritty, tough competitive nature who will let it show if there's more of a league format. I saw season three, we actually saw it a little bit. You know, we saw, we saw teams energy standard and Kelly Condors had a little rivalry going. I mean, it was on social media. There were some storylines. And if you guys heard the, the Coleman story, Ryan Murphy beef from season two, uh, I don't know if you have, but th- well, let's, hear a whole... let's hear it. Let's hear it. Yeah. Let's hear it. Okay. This is a big story in, <laughs> in, in, in 21. Um, first off, this is not something they hold a grudge towards each other for. This is not a personal thing for them. Yeah. It was a storyline at the time. So the, the skins event at ISL is, uh, I guess it, I'll, I'll, I'll go over it. The skins event is eight people start with a 50, um, and the top four or top six, top four. Yeah. Top four from those eight make a second 50 and the interval is three minutes. So it's, it's tough. I mean, that second one is tough. And then top two from that second one, do a third one. And let me tell you that third one is not fun. It is so <laughs> damn hard. It's yeah. insane. But anyway, Murphy is probably the best backstroke skins guy there is. He beat Murphy. Uh, he beat Coleman on the last one. He, he glanced towards his bench and he mouthed the word bitch. And they caught it on camera, like the camera caught it. Yeah. And that's a storyline that can get engaged in the general public. That's Mm -hmm. something that is enticing to everyone, not just swimmers. Um, And all between them. I don't want to bring that. I don't want to bring this up again. Like it's not, it's not a big deal. I promise you. I trained for years, but like, that's just something that that's not going to happen at the Olympics. You know, you're on stage every like the whole world is looking at you not only is the whole world looking at you you're representing your country you know you're, you're representing usa you're not gonna you're not gonna say you know you're not gonna turn to the guy next to you and go yeah fuck you i just beat you like, <laughs> you're not gonna do that you're not yeah. gonna do that at the olympics yeah. and you shouldn't do that at the olympics um yeah. right but you know not that you would do that at isl either but you know what i'm saying there's a little more you can be a little bit more you know, outgoing with your emotion, you know, you can, you can, you can celebrate a little harder. You can get a little bit more in the face of somebody and it doesn't have to be like a personal attack towards them, towards their country. It can be like a team on team thing. Like it'd be a rivalry right. thing, like yep. rivalry in sports. That's the best part of sports, man. Like at all levels, college, like professional, like NFL, NBA, like all levels, the rivalries are there and those rivalries just don't develop as much. Um, they don't get as gritty, you know, USA and Australia kind of have a gritty one, but they don't develop as, as fully formed as they can. And, you know, NC state and UNC, for example, I mean, that's a, that's a nasty rivalry. That's a nasty football rivalry. Duke UNC basketball. I mean, that is, that's just top tier. Um, And at the end of the day, those rivalries aren't personal attacks towards anybody. That's not, 
that's not, you know, me versus this individual. That's that's NC State. That's UNC versus Duke. That's NC State versus UNC. Um, and when you're talking at those levels versus the international levels, those rivalries can be a whole lot grosser and still be okay in a normal setting. So that's, you know, first tangent, I guess, of the day. <laughs> yeah, no, no. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Definitely really liked good. it. Uh, and that, just Go ahead, Luke. Just one thing. Uh to any of the viewers who like, because ISL isn't like super huge as of now. Yeah, no. So like, you want to give them like a quick rundown of what the ISL is, like what they do, kind of like the format, the run up. Yeah. So um, the idea for the ISL was to put on a show. Um, I went to I went to SoFi Stadium for for the Panthers Rams game a week and a half, two weeks ago now. I mean, that's a show. That's awesome. Anybody can go to that. Even somebody who doesn't know anything about football can go to that and be like, this is exciting. This is mm-hmm. entertainment. That was the goal of ISL. Um, and it was also to be more of a, it was also to be beneficial for the swimmers. Like I was saying earlier, you know, if you are on a contract with this, say you're on a three year, be a massive contract. You know, if ISL runs four months of the year, and you have a three-year deal worth 30000 a year. That's that's just three months of the year where you're getting paid to do something you love and you get to compete. You know, the other nine months of the year, you can have a, a normal job. It's an off-season. You can, you can do whatever you want, whatever you need to do to make money. That, I think, is kind of the goal of the ISL. Um, so when you go to the meets, there's there's lights everywhere. There's, there's big black curtains blocking all the stuff you don't need to see. It's just once you get out behind the blocks there's lights flashing everywhere you're you're ready to go that the fans can see just true uninterrupted competing um and that's the that's the number one thing about isl that's what the goal of swimming needs to be you know that in my opinion that's that's where it needs to head that's where it's starting to head we've seen the last year or two um a lot of people a lot of swimmers are realizing hey i can swim fast like top times for, for three months in a row before I start to fade, like it's doable. It's just like, you know, NBA, NBA players play 82 games a year and they're still able to compete at their highest level in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Like that's, that's something swimming obviously cannot go 82 meets a year, but it can go, you know, one, one, two meets a week for a couple months. Absolutely. It can do that. And and that's what ISL was kind of setting out to do. Gotcha. So how are, um, this is a question I always wondered. So how are swimmers rested or not rested for an ISL meet? Um, it's about, so, so I guess how it goes. Um, so it, it's, a, it's really similar actually to other professional sports. Really. Mm-hmm. You have an off season, you do whatever you do, individual growing, you do, you do work, you do business adve- adventures, you do whatever you want to do in the off season. And then you basically have a training camp you do. And and there's no training with teams like full teams yet uh, in the ISL, which I think is whole is part of the reason why it's held back. People are still training wherever they want to, but anyway, you, you kind of get, you build up your endurance. You kind of build up some strength. You get ready. You get your body ready to be able to go for three months. Basically you, you train up, you build that base and then you get to the meets and it's just managing. You're just mm-hmm. managing. It's like every other professional sport there is. That's like every sport, you know, NHL players, they have a big training camp before the year and then they manage all year. You're not, you don't have to push, you don't have to push and push and push in the, in between meets. You know, you might have a day where you kind of spike the intensity, you get a little racing in, but other than that, you're managing your strength, you're managing your recovery. And that's, that's the truest form of competition in my opinion just setting yourself up to go back to back to back weekends. That's the most true uninterrupted form of training there is. Cause that takes away a lot of the mental fatigue of what swimming has typically been in the past of training for, for one, two, three years at a time. And then mm-hmm. going for Olympic trials. That is, that's too much. That's too much mental fatigue in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Some people are better at it than others. And, some people never reach the full potential in swimming because that's just not an acceptable way for they, for them to do it. And I'm also not saying here to take away the Olympic hype of swimming. I mean, it's fantastic. It's amazing energy. 
you know, going into Olympic trials, going into the Olympics, the hype around it, the energy around it, representing your country. There is no other feeling like that. Absolutely. But it's not healthy to, to only do that. It's not healthy for, for, for any athlete. Yep. For sure. I definitely agree with that. Yeah. Hot take number two. <laughs> <laughs> and I think you do, you have a really, I agree with you. You have a really valid point in that for, if you're not a huge swim fan outside of the Olympics, um, like most people don't really pay attention to it. So yeah, can, you, you know, definitely do need yeah. something that, you know, that not a normal, like someone could be flipping through the TV and be like, Oh, this is cool. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you flip through the TV and you see a, just a bunch of lights, you see a bunch of like men and women in the top physical form that you can possibly see. And you see them dive off a, off a block with, you know, the lights go down and there's only lights in the pool. Like you'd see that in, in a general, someone in the general public might never know what swimming is, but they might see that and be like, wow, that's pretty damn cool. Right. And I only did summer league growing up would see that and be like, wow, like this is, this is even cooler than what I did in high school in, in the summer. Like, you know, just stuff yeah. like that. Right. And I love, I love going to a pro swim series, but I don't think the average fan could, could flip through the TV yeah. and see a pro <laughs> swim series and get yeah. like super pumped about it. I mean, it's just not enough energy i feel to get people excited absolutely yeah. i couldn't do that as a kid i can watch a tier pro series as a kid there's no way <laughs> there's no way that's you know. yeah I, I just had like one question like take us through so at a regular like high level international meet the difference between that and walking onto the field or walking into the pool deck in an isl pro swim series meet um it is the it's it's just the mental intensity the mental intensity. See, the, the, I guess what I'm going for is when, when a league is established in the NBA, the NHL, it's more about the, the physical intensity. NFL, it's about physical endurance. It's about physical competition. The mental side of things, you know, how you prepare your mind, still insanely important, still probably more important than the physical side. But when we're talking, when we're, when you walk on deck for a world championships, I don't know what the Olympics is like. I'm, ass, I'm assuming it's the same, except even more like magnified. But when you walk on the pool for world championships, that is 99.9% mental. There's, there's no, like when you get behind the blocks at a world championships, everybody's prime, everybody's ready. It's not a physical thing. It's not a physical thing anymore. It's a mental thing. And it's, it's just, it's just not as healthy. It's just not something you can do repeatedly through the course of the year, like you could do with ISL. Um, sure. And then on top of that, you get into the financial aspect of things, especially in, uh, in, in the USA, when, when it, things are so deep, we essentially have one or two meets to give ourselves financial stability for the entire year. And, and that's it. When you go into a meet knowing that your financial stability for an entire year is dependent on your swimming in that weekend, how are you supposed to perform at your best? I mean, that is, that's so much mental stress on you. It's just not conductive for, for your best performance. It's right. just not. So this yep. would be like, maybe I'm wrong, but tell me what you think of this. So if in football, the only game that they, they had would be the Super Bowl, and it happened, let's say, every four years. And if, and if the football players didn't perform well – then they Kick would hardly They're make done. any money. <laughs> They're done. Yeah. Right. It's like if, if you didn't perform well, like imagine you didn't do well at that Super Bowl. We're going to the next guy. That's it. You're done. Mm -hmm. Chances until the next one. What, yeah. A year from now, two years from now, whatever. Like the it's it's just not a healthy way. And then um, you know, another thing is, you know, the greatest quarterback of all time, maybe. All right, I'm not I'm not trying to debate this. <laughs> Tom, Tom Brady. Okay, let's just assume Tom Brady's the goat, right? He's a six round draft pick. He, he, he's not obviously going to be the greatest in college, right? We're missing so many swimmers like that who can develop over time, you know, uh, at least for the men, uh, male athletes don't normally peak till like 26 to 30. I mean, I'm still gaining natural strength. I think I'm still mm -hmm. going to drop time for a while. We're missing out on so many amazing uh, athletes who just don't even get a chance to develop because they don't, they're not going to make any money. Mm -hmm. for, for years um in in the sport the way things currently are but if you had a league established they could go in as a depth guy you know they go into the league as a depth guy like be relay guy 
you know, make, make some money to help supplement them more throughout the year. Um, maybe in the off season, they work, you know, whatever job they need to, like I said earlier. And then when they're 25, 26, maybe they're putting up times that are like second, first, they can fight for a new contract deal and they, they can land a huge contract and, and enjoy their prime on a team that appreciates their value. Uh, right. It's, it's, it's just, it's just a much better way way of looking at sports in my right opinion, right because sure. so there could be a, what you're saying is that they're swimmers right now out of college you know they don't have those top top times and they don't have an opportunity to progress while making a living and a chance to do that absolutely i mean i'll, I'll give you a specific exam, example example yeah. one of my good friends andrew wilson he's a d3 swimmer he ended up you know popping off by his junior senior year so he had the times to be like okay i can swim professionally and make money but how many like how many D3 swimmers are there who are just one year away from that, but mm-hmm. their career ends before they get a chance to, to pop off like that? I mean, Andrew Wilson's kind of an anomaly coming from D3. Um, I, we got a training partner out here who's a, who's a D3 guy in mission. And he went like 19 to his senior year. And he's like, wow, like maybe I should give swimming a try. And like, who knows if four years down the line, like he could be a top sprinter in the U S you just don't know. And like, right you know, sometimes, sometimes, sometimes they don't develop like that. Obviously that's just, that's how sports go, but we're not giving those athletes a chance right now. That's essentially what I'm saying. There's no chance for them in the current state of the way things are in swimming. Yep. So uh, just, just for a uh, sake of flip the sides, there's a lot of people who are also against the ISL. So what would you say to someone who's against the ISL? I, I think, um, years of a monopoly over the sport of swimming by Olympic committees and FINA have established this principle of uh, you can only swim fast once or twice a year. And on top of that, they are only advertising the fact that, that swimming they're, they're only advertising these amazing world record pop off times once a year. And they only push those people out. The reason why the limelight, is so hard on swimmers like Michael Phelps, Katie Ledecky, Caleb Dressel is because they're so amazing. They're such amazing athletes, right? Once in a lifetime athletes. And obviously they're going to get this. They're, they'd probably get similar press, you know, in ISL and stuff like that. But, but what happens when you put all your advertisements on those one, two, three people is the same thing we talk about in swimming forever now is mental health shit. I mean, there are so many elite athletes at that level who just have talked about so many dangerous struggles they've had in the past. And those, those troubles will be significantly less if we had an established league, if Caleb Dressel was part of a team, the, like Caleb's part of the Cali Condors, you know, when he had his, his struggles over the past few years, we limited his schedule in ISL a little bit. And like the, it, that's a whole team move and we're fully supporting him in that decision. You know, he has a support structure around him that you just don't necessarily get when you're the face of USA swimming, you know, right. when, when people sure. outside the sport, look at Caleb and say, wow, this guy wins, this guy only wins. That's, that's not, they don't understand what goes on behind the scenes. They don't understand the struggles. They don't understand stuff that, that comes with that pressure. Yeah. But when you have a team aspect, when you have people around you to fully support you and say like, yo, like, yeah, dude, we'll step up. Like I, I was the number two sprinter behind Caleb on the Condors. And I was like, like, dude, I was like, Caleb, like you, you don't want to swim like five events a day. That's, that's cool, man. I'll step up in the 50. Like I'm ready. Like I'm going to do my best. Like I'm ready to race. Like that's just how, that's the beauty of, of sports leagues, you know, NBA, there's a six guy for a reason. When the, when, the, when the guys on the court get tired, the sixth guy comes in. He's like, I'm ready to step up. I'm do it. You take a rest. I know you'll be back to take my spot in a few minutes, but I'm going to do everything I can to get our team a win. You know, like that's what, that's what, that's what swimming needs to strive for. The depth, yeah. you know, there's just so many missed opportunities for so right. many swimmers. Right. So, yeah, because in the ISL, you probably can have, you know, you, you got a team, you got people to have your back, but then, and, you know, you go to the Olympics or world championships and you don't perform, the whole world comes down on you. The whole world, the whole world comes yeah. down on you. And I'm not saying like, you know, your fan bases in leagues are going to come down on you, but it's just, it's not, it's really not the same. It's For not sure. the same when, you know, and, and even though 
U.S. you know, Team USA specifically is extremely supportive at those meets. I mean, the support you get at those meets is unreal. Absolutely. Yeah. It's it's just not it's not going to be the same. It's it just can't be the same. You're representing too much um, versus, you know, when you're representing, a, you know, a, a team, the Cali Condors, you know, it's it's just it's like, you know, it's just it's different. It's not as significant. It's not as impactful. It's just you're you're more you're treated more as. I don't know how to, I don't know how to describe it, but if you know what I'm saying, you know, it, it, there's, there's less of representation there, I guess yeah. that is all I'm saying. For sure. For sure. Well, what do you think the ISL um, can do in the future? So obviously this season is, is not happening due to, is it the Ukraine Russia type thing? Is that kind of play a factor in? Cause is the owner of the league from Ukraine or you can fill us yeah. in there? Yeah, yeah. So, so the main, the main, the founder of the league, the main funder of the league is Ukrainian businessman, and um, he owns a company called Energy Standard, like the mm-hmm. swim team. Okay. And they they supply the power to Ukraine as a country, so they get paid like by Ukraine for the power. So obviously, wartime, you know, they, they can't. There's no economic flow there. Right, right. But that that is an issue. The league desperately messed up on from the start is not getting uh funds from different sources like having a variety of funds influxed into the league um and that's something they're working on now i really hope they're still working on it to be honest i'm i haven't heard anything in a little bit which pretty scared for it but um last i heard they're working on getting funding from other sources kind of having a more steady uh flow of income um so that way, when something as shitty as as the war happens, there's other sources t- to still fund it. Uh, and that was that I, that's, you know, and then COVID also just destroyed the cash flow of the league, too. I mean, there's been two insane world events, like absolutely astronomical world events that happen every, you know, once every few decades right. that have decimated an already fragile league from the start. Uh, so the league was growing you know decently they, they might have tried to push it too hard too fast um but look at like nfl like back in the day when nfl was first starting i mean it was a joke i mean football was all college uh, back in the day it takes it takes time for for stuff like this to develop and I'm, I'm someone who wants to give it that time i mean i'll deal with these struggles i'll deal with these struggles all year man i don't care like it sucks so bad it's such a detriment not to be paid um, you know, swimmers from ISL season three last year, we haven't gotten paid anything. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Like we, we've gotten, um, $3,500. I think everyone that's it. I mean, and people are making six digits sometimes. Mm-hmm. So absolutely that sucks. But if this is something that we have to deal with to progress the sport of swimming, I am more than here for it. I'm so here for it because ISL is the most fun in swimming I've ever had. And it's, it's not close. College is kind of close, but <laughs> it's just next level it's professional stuff i mean it's crazy yeah gotcha. yeah so um so that would be season three in 2021 20 yeah 2021 was season three gotcha. yeah gotcha and and is some of that just because of the war on ukraine or is that just from just other they, stuff yeah they who knows really <laughs> i mean they've been late since the inception of the league on pretty much every payment that's true that's absolutely yeah. true um I can tell you the war definitely is not helping it. <laughs> right. So it absolutely is a factor. Um, how much of a factor, how little of a factor, what are the other factors? I don't know. You know, obviously I don't have the money to fund anything in the league, so right, I can right. tell you, but you're uh, along for the ride. You're I'm along, along for, the for the, I'm here. I'm here for it. I mean, I'm gotcha. all in. I mean, ISL comes back. I'm, I'm back in hundred percent. There's, there's no question. So I let's gotcha. say ISL does come back. What can ISL do as a league? to further it to make it um more accessible just to the normal sports fan um i think i think that they're missing out on a huge market because of the tv deals they're trying to get but not successfully getting Uh uh-huh um and that's something that honestly i don't know anything about i don't know anything about business ventures right i feel like streaming services that they're just not able to get into for example they started their own streaming service which i think was a mistake i think a lot of people think it was a mistake versus if you get a deal with like youtube or twitch which is like that that's 
that's the biggest things for high schoolers nowadays, you know, mm-hmm. which YouTube, TikTok, social media, essentially. I think that's the route they kind of should have taken. Uh, I'm not a business guy. Like, I don't know <laughs> about it, but that's just my opinion. You know, they need to yeah, yeah. similar to that. For gotcha. sure. Uh, if I was like someone who was trying to get into the ISL, what would be like a, like a roadmap or like some lines of advice that would help, help a newbie get into it? Yeah. So that's a tough one. Cause swimming is a sport that takes, takes years to develop. You kind of have to start, you know, younger, but that's yeah, the yeah. same with all sports. I couldn't go and pick up hockey right now. I don't know how to skate like that was <laughs> at least eight years, 10 exactly. years for me to decent of level. And by then I'm like, I'm in my thirties. There's no chance for that. But I think eventually uh, what happens is you can have, just like other leagues, you have a, a tier, you know, a, a tier of yep. you have a minor league, you have a, you have a major league and, and Cali Carnivores have a minor league affiliate uh, and people who want to have it, who want to step in the door, go to tryouts for that minor league team. Um, and then eventually can work their way up to, to, to major league, you know, they worked their way up to like professional swimming. That's just kind of the standard format for sports leagues nowadays. And it works, it works everywhere. I mean, there's not a single place on earth where that format is not just wildly successful. I mean, Europe with soccer, Australia has amazing sports leagues. Australia has amazing uh, Australian football leagues, normal football leagues. I mean, it's just rugby leagues. It, it's everywhere. It's global. That's yep. just the way sports need to be nowadays. So that's, you know, that's yep. what it is. But right now, do you think they're taking a lot of recruits from college swimming or like where are they getting ma- most of these? Yeah. So, from? so ISL season three, um, they did a sort of, I, I guess we could sort of call it a fantasy draft. Um, so what happened was teams protected 15 athletes each. And then everyone else who, who has been in the league goes into the draft. And anybody, anybody in the whole world can enter this draft. They put in their best times. They, they, whatever they're entered in the draft that's the same as others other other sports you know and uh that draft was was pretty successful it balanced out the league a little bit of course the the teams at the top were still at the top but i think the teams at the bottom weren't as out of it as they were isl season one season two so a couple more years like that you know and and when people like when and and like uh we'll take the nfl for example new england patriots they had tom brady for for like i don't know however long once he left that that's kind of an identity crisis for the new england patriots like you know they're they have to start rebuilding that's just that's the flow of sports so as the cali condors progress as caleb dressel gets older as he starts thinking about retirement you know as he or maybe he starts slowing down or like i start slowing down we got to start focus on rebuilding we got to focus on the draft that's the flow of leagues that's how they work that, that can work for swimming too. That can be exactly how swimming can work. You know, this is how it goes. Yeah, I definitely think that's a great outlook of the sport. And I think it'll be a huge help to just the sport of swimming as a whole. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any other things on ISL that you want to hit? Um, I mean, I guess on that same on that same point, I think one of the major gripes about ISL was the fact that, oh man, it's, it's only the top four teams. It's only the top <laughs> three teams. I'm like, that's how that's how all sports leagues are for here. Like Golden State Warriors have been um, like a top tier team for how many years now? For They're not sure. going to be that way forever. It's it's right. going to come back down. That's the flow of sports, man. I mean, that's Cleveland Browns were a disaster for for so many years, and they're picking it back up. I mean, that's that's how these leagues go. Yeah, and people wanted to see that as like a short term, like wow, like Cali Condors are always going to be great. Well, they're not. I mean, they might not. They might be. They might not. You know, that's <laughs> that's how it yep. goes. I don't know. Yeah, definitely. I think it'll look outlook wise. It'll look great for the yeah. future of swimming. So now that we hit on the ISL and kind of the future sport of swimming, we'd love to hear about kind of 2022 world championships. Yeah. Um, our our um, viewers would probably cancel us if we didn't talk about That's the world awesome. championships Absolutely. with you. Yeah. So we kind of want to throw it back to um, a little bit before world trials. You said that um, I think I saw something on Instagram that you're just going in with no expectations, just wanted to have fun with it. Yeah. I mean, just, 
really embracing the true nature of, of competing the, the the truest finest form like going in i'm gonna race you i'm gonna beat you and i'm gonna do my thing you know not with the expectation of i gotta do this for money like i gotta win this for money i gotta do this just going in there being like i'm gonna do racing i've, I've been competing in all kinds of sports since i was six years old i can do this i can compete uh-huh. with anybody okay i don't care how I feel. I don't care how my training is going. I don't care that I was 255 pounds in January. I don't care. I mean, I race at 215, by the way. So yeah, <laughs> I dropped 40 pounds in a couple months to get ready for world trials, but yeah, Jeez. you know, it's just, just nature of sport to compete, to have fun, to be a good sport after it and to bring people together. You know, that's just yeah. the truest form. That was what I was embracing. That was my goal. And that healthy mindset is what, you know, made me swim insanely well. I dropped half a second in a 50. I mean, mm-hmm. that's crazy. But. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And so you get, you qualify sixth in the hundred. Is that right? Yeah. Six, six at world trials, six. barely slipped on the relay. And then you were, were you able to swim the 50 backstroke because you were already on that relay? Yeah. Yeah. That's right. I, I got second at the 50 back at trials. I was the third fastest time ever, but I got second. Yeah. <laughs> Um, which sucks. And they, they didn't have a selection criteria for second, which that's a whole nother thing. Uh, <laughs> they, they didn't fill out the men's roster, but they didn't have a selection criteria for second, which is an issue in itself. But uh, so I got a little bit lucky that I was able to swim the 50 back, uh, but I earned that spot in that relay. And uh, I swam that relay in prelims, earned the spot at finals, got to swim it at finals too. Um, just had so much fun. Yeah. Was the, was the, so what for the audience who don't know, where was world championships this last summer? World championships was in, in Budapest. Okay. Was probably the most beautiful permanent standing pool in the whole world. I mean, yeah. it's amazing too. I mean, it's awesome. So you swim that 400 free relay and is that before the 50 back show gets started? Yeah. So 400 free relay is the first, the very first day 50 yep. back was the last two days. So I had the full meet in between, I think like six or seven days to just yeah try to stay out of. Yeah. Keep, what, so keep, you keep the training going. Yeah. So you win that world championship on the relay kind of take us through that relay and um, how it went. And like, what were your thoughts after being world champion for the first time? Yeah. Oh gosh. What a fun relay. What is, was so fun. I mean, I, I don't think there's going to ever be anything like being on a U.S. relay. Uh, but I've been a relay swimmer my whole career. Uh, I, I always love getting up for relays, especially anchoring. I'll always be a guy who's, who embraces that pressure. Um, it goes, goes back to just competing. Really. Yeah. I mean, just having fun competing. And knowing that, uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's a four-man win. It's a four-man loss. You know, it doesn't yeah. matter – if my goggles fall off and I swim two seconds slower in my best time, it's still a four man loss. If we lose that race, you know, and, for sure. And knowing that your team's with you and they're going to support you no matter how fast you go, no matter how slow you go, uh, is such an amazing feeling. And I think that's something that, that Caleb, <laughs> I hope Caleb starts to embrace, you know, uh, he always <laughs> for the, for, for the ISO season two and season three, He'd always be like, man, like I swam so. <laughs> no, you didn't, man. Like this is a team. Like this is a team <laughs> thing, man. Yeah. And I think I think he's really starting to embrace that. I mean, that four hundred free relay. I think all our times are within four tenths of each other. I mean, it was such a team win, and it, and we were all just so you know happy and supportive of how fast we went. It was such a cool feeling. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right, now we got to hear about this fifty backstroke. So take us through just everything from, from the beginning to, to the end. Yeah. yeah. Oh, what a whirlwind. Um, so prelims and semifinals were kind of uneventful. Um, you know, I, I, I do get, get in the, in the ready room, like always, like I've done a hundred, hundred, like dozens of times before. So pretty, pretty comfortable in there now. Uh, get behind the block, look around at the crowd the the arena the pool is actually a little smaller i think they they close off some of this the seatings they had mm-hmm. in 20 2017 so i was like even though i was ready for that full effect it was all just even more comfortable for me so the nerves didn't really get to me there i was just so focused on on being able to race race strong like i always do got through prelims and semifinals that's 
that's the only goal. Got through semifinals to finals. And apparently, uh, not apparently, I do this. I have a really long finish on backstroke. I mean, I, I got long arms, man. I don't want to hit my head on the wall. <laughs> um, so my finish was long in semifinals. And some people were saying I should have gotten DQ'd because because my, my body's fully submerged, which for the record, for the haters out there, <laughs> I, I'm not fully submerged on that finish. I promise you, I got long arms. I'm in there just because I'm, I'm underwater after the finish. I'm not, I'm not, I'm touched the wall before my feet go underwater. Mm-hmm. Um, people don't, you can't see it, you know, in, in live time on, on a TV camera. It's not possible. <laughs> yeah. um, so that's kind of going through my head a little bit going into finals. Um, but I worked a lot in warm up before finals on on finishing, not as long, not as underwater, not as submerged. Uh, when I get behind the blocks for finals, um, I try not to think about the details like that. But I kind of had to in this case because I didn't want to get DQ. I was so worried. Um, I get out there, um, pretty normal. Take your mark, beep, uh, have a good breakout have a good first 25. I know I'm, I know I, I'm in contention to win. It's going to take Hunter's going to have to have an amazing swim to beat me. Cause I'm, I'm swimming pretty much the same way I did in prelims finals where I had great races. Uh, and I go into the wall. I do normally, I, I have normally take taken three strokes in the past. As soon as I like see the flag, everyone sees the flags at a little bit different level. Um, but from where I see it, I took four strokes this time. I did, I did my normal, like kind of dive down. I, I know for a fact, I'm not kidding you for a fact that I was not submerged on that finish. There is not a single doubt in my mind. Cause this was a shorter fin, the shortest finish I had of the meet. Um, so I touched the wall. And as soon as I see that one, man, I'm just like, I'm blowing up inside. I mean, I, I celebrate, I celebrate hard. I mean, I don't, I don't do the showmanship, like sit on the lane line, like this thing. Like, I go hard, man. Like I, I scream, like I'm not doing it for showmanship. That is just pure authentic celebration. Um, and I just, I, I was shocked when I get, when I get to the interview and I, and they, I saw the DQ up there. I was, I was so angry. I was, I was in a rage, man, for, for like a few minutes and then I start walking down to warm down pool and I get, I get so sad. I am so devastated on the walk back to the warm down pool. And it's because I knew that I finished pretty normal there on top of that, on a little side tangent, the rule in place that makes submerging on the finish illegal is the 15 meter rule, which says at no point can you be fully submerged after 15 fit fully submerged after 15 meters. So it's mm. not even specifically a finish rule. It's just to stop the 15 meter rule. So it's, you know, a matter of fact, if you're fully submerged before the finish, you're probably having a slower finish than if you do it the other way. So if anything, it's slower. Um, but anyway, I, I get back to the bench. I'm, I just sit in the chair. Like I'm devastated. I can't change to go warm down. Like I'm so sad. And then uh, the team manager comes up to me um, to, uh, to, uh, to actually Stacy and, and uh, uh, Carly come up to me like, don't worry. Like we're going to fight this. Like we're going to try as hard as we can to get this return. And in my head, I'm like thinking, there's no, there's no fucking way they're overturning this at world championships. There's there, but I held on to a little glimmer of hope. Um, and as I'm, you know, sitting there and I see in the warm down pool, they have a TV up of the, of the broadcast. And then I see them, the 50 backstrokers getting ready to go on the podium. And I'm like, man, it's doomed. Like there's no chance. Like they're, they're doing the podium ceremony. It's not happening. And like in the middle of hunter standing on first place the u.s anthems literally playing in the arena and stacy i forgot if it was stacy or carly but i think it was carly comes up to me and, and she goes we, we got it. or it might have been might have been liz sorry if carly or liz are watching i forgot <laughs> um walk up they, they go up to me and they go justin like we got overturned you're a world champion and i was like they're doing they're doing the podium ceremony at the moment, like at the moment when I find this out and I actually just, I actually started crying to be honest. I mean, I was just that spectrum of emotions from finishing the race to 20 minutes or so 30 minutes to that point is something that I don't think any human 
could maybe ever feel doing anything else except competing at that level in that scenario happening. I mean, it's, it's insane. Um, so I'm breaking down, like I'm giving hugs to like Todd DeSorbo, who was my coach at NC state for a little and, and Ryan held who I, who I swam with and lived with at NC state for a little. I mean, it was an unreal feeling to know that I went through that shitty experience and then to be at like on top of the world, literally. I mean, it, it was such an incredible feeling. I can't yeah. even describe it. For sure. Yeah. That was, that's so crazy. I can't even imagine what that would be like. I, I was watching, um, I was watching it live and I was at work. So I'm, I'm trying to take orders, um, through the fast food. And then I was like, let's go. He won. And then I was like, <laughs> Oh my God, he lost. And then he's like, he won again. So like, I can't imagine like, I mean, how it was for me. And then for you probably times 10 million of what the <laughs> yeah, average yeah. fan felt I mean, just least. watching it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was, it was bonkers, man. And they took us, they took us, um, they took us to this back room with like a coach from Italy who the Italian swimmer, I think the Italian swimmer got fourth. Uh-huh. I don't remember. I don't remember who got third and fourth. I don't remember the order, but one of them who was already had his bronze medal, <laughs> the, the coach is back in there. And then this guy, like one of the leaders at FINA is like, so like, we're going to have to take your medal and give it to the other guy. <laughs> and I felt so bad. I was like, this is insane. I'm sitting here so awkward. I'm like, holy shit. Like, yeah. I can't imagine how enraged <clears throat> this coach might be right now, but he right. handled it super well. He seemed like pretty, I mean, he's, I don't want to say super okay with it. Cause he's obviously disappointed, but he seemed okay with it. Um, uh, and man, that, that back room was scary. And then they say, uh, and then they, the Phoenix asked me like, do you, do you want a podium ceremony? I'm like, do I, of course I want a podium ceremony, man. That's like, <laughs> this is the best part of the gold medal. Of course I do. So they gave me my own, I was expecting the other two guys to come back and do it with me, but they gave me my own ceremony. And I was like, wow, that's, has that ever happened before? I might be the first, <laughs> I might be the first one in history that that happened to. Right. Yeah. So, yep. so yeah, I was that's... standing on there like by myself anthem playing like didn't didn't know what to do with my hands i'm like i'm like <laughs> you know hand over my heart with my right hand and my left hand it's just like what do i what do i do you know like i can't and then like after it happens i can't like shake hands or like like you know take pictures so i'm just like i just like wave and i'm like oh gosh like what do i do now i just like walk back and then once i got to the fans it was pretty normal you know like you know, handshakes hugs with, with some fans like some people i knew who were there um so pretty standard after the podium ceremony, but the podium ceremony was really weird, really unique, but you know, maybe nobody else in history gets to experience that being alone on the podium. So there you that's, go. that's really cool. <laughs> yeah. I mean, talk about highest high to lowest low yeah. back to the highest high. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we just got some, some fun questions for you to finish it out. If you're down. Yeah, absolutely. Same. All right. So the first one we got favorite pool you've ever swam at. Hmm. Okay. 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 So man, I, I got, I might have to stay Olympic Olympic trials in Omaha. I okay. Mean, Ooh, that okay. set up, that setup's so incredible. There's really nothing like it. Uh, one of the most unique places I've been to was, was in Taipei for university games in 2017. It was like a, I don't know. It was like a, it was kind of just like a small Olympic trials dome, but it was yeah. really cool. I mean, it's really cool and unique, but Olympic trials is probably the coolest. Very cool. We're from Nebraska. So we both, we've uh, yeah. watched it. I've been last yeah. two, two times just as a spectator. And I mean, it's, it's so, so cool. fun. So if fun. Ever, I don't know if there's like tickets for spectators to get back to like the warm down area too, but like, that's also so cool. Sweet. If there's any chance, if you ever get a chance to. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Gotcha. Uh, favorite best event you've ever had, or like maybe just best event in general, or best race. Best race. Hmm. You know, I mean, that. I mean, at finals, it wasn't personally my best race, but I mean, just that energy with those guys. And beating a, a Caleb Dressel of Florida Gators by almost a full second. I mean, there's there's nothing like that. You know, swimming at the top level and winning by that much. You know, some people get get to experience that pretty common commonly. Like Michael Phelps, 
Caleb got to experience that probably individually, you know, some world record holders, the Hungarian tuner flyer does, but me personally, I don't think I'll ever be at that level to individually experience that. So experiencing that with a, with a group of guys is, is unreal. You said, you said what relay that was, you cut out a little bit. Oh, really? Uh, four and a free relay. Okay. My, cool. my junior year. Gotcha. Okay. Quiet. Uh, sorry. No, I think it's network error. You're good. Uh, favorite drill. Drill. Oh yeah. So my favorite drill is actually, uh, with fins. I do this every warm up. Um, I call it four and four. So it works short course yards or short course meters. It's four dolphin kicks and four strokes for, uh, just a 50. I do two fifties like that. And that's a, it helps me. It helps me get, uh, stay really long and powerful. And then after that, I get into more speed once I've established that, that long and powerful for sure. Gotcha. Um, if you could swim with anyone, dead or alive, who would it be? There's no limits. It can be anyone you ever want. Who you want? We talking? We talking race or like? No, just like you get to share some laps casually. with, like, um, yeah, okay. anyone. So, so actual swimming. I mean, it could be like Tom Hanks, or it could be um, just like there's no limit. They they gain the ability to swim with you, and you can do a practice <laughs> with whoever you want. Dude, I, I dude, I want to meet. I want to meet Tom DeLong. We'll go mess around some some laps in the pool, make dumbass jokes. I mean, he's a dumbass dumb ass joke guy. I'm a dumbass joke guy. I mean, I think we'd get along. That'd be fun. There you go. For sure. Who's the coolest person you've ever swam with? Like, could be same pool, same heat. Pretty much open ended. So, <clears throat> I guess I could say, I mean, at this point in my career, I can say pretty much anybody. But when I was 16, I made junior nationals for the first time in the same race as Laszlo Che. Che, I don't know how to say his last name, but he's an Hungarian swimmer. 4 am or I mean, he's the guy who got silver. I think the guy who got silver next to Michael Phelps in the 4 am in like 2008, or maybe he got bronze or something. Yeah. And like 16 year old me who hadn't made junior nationals yet. So I was, you know, I was a fast, really fast swimmer, but I wasn't like elite by any means being able to swim like right next to him in the next lane over. I mean, he beat me by 15 seconds, but <laughs> that was, that was so cool. I mean, it was in the 4am too. I mean, it was something that like he was training with team elite in Charlotte at the time and the meet was in Charlotte. So like, that's just, that's just an experience as a 16 year old. You just don't get very often. Yep. And um, that's why I love, I love going to smaller meets in, in Southern, especially since I've gotten here in Southern California. Like I, I raced that a mission Viejo inner squad meet a couple of weeks before. I don't remember if it was before world trials or world champs, but just to like show some 15 year olds, like, Hey dude, you're swimming next to like a, a world championship swimmer. <laughs> yeah. Like that, yeah. that was such a cool feeling for me. Like I want to give that to, to other kids as well, for sure. Yeah. That's awesome. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, words of wisdom this is always our last question you'd give to a viewer or just anyone watching yeah okay make sure whatever whatever you're doing in life make sure it's with uh with a purpose uh for example for years in swimming uh like i said in my in between years like junior to senior to like a couple years out of college i didn't I lost sight of like my original purpose of something that just that pure competitive fun nature. So whatever you do in life, make sure you're, you're going back. You, you always appreciate your roots. You always appreciate why you're doing what you're doing. Uh, even if it sucks so badly at the time, you're like, you know what? There's a reason why I'm doing this uh, and it doesn't matter what it is. Um, that's one, one words of wisdom for me. Also another words of wisdom for me is make sure you take care of yourself. Uh, and that can mean anything for me. That means embracing my hobbies, embracing, you know, myself outside of swimming, uh, take care of yourself. Okay. Uh, and it could be something so simple as playing video games. It could be something like playing guitar. Those are two things for me. Like, I don't have to be good at either of them. I just love doing them. I am good at them, though. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you don't have to be good at them. Yep. <laughs> Paul, you got any last uh, last things? Um, what do you think, kind of going on your advice that you gave to everyone else, what do you think your why, your why is? My why? Yeah. Man. 
That's a tough one. I've been asked this so many times, but yeah. it, change, it changes every time you think For about sure. it. For sure. Yeah. Um, man, I'm, I'm just here to experience the world, really. That's why I swim. I mean, that's part of the reason why I swim. Just experiencing new things every time I go on a trip, meeting new people. I'm, I'm a very introverted person. So meeting people is kind of tough. But, you know, once I get into those smaller, more social, you know, smaller social gatherings where I can kind of learn to talk to meet new people in a smaller setting, more comfortable setting. I mean, those are experiences that that you just don't get in a lot of other jobs. You know, like I, sure. I Cali Condors, I meet people. I meet people from from England, from from Poland, from Taipei, like Eddie Wang on our team, dude, like you just don't get to meet those people without swimming. I just, you know, embrace embrace the stuff about what you're doing that you don't normally think about, you know, gotcha. for sure. Well, I think uh, that wraps up episode 17 of uh, Justin Rest.